Good morning, everyone. Good morning.
Ja. A very, very good morning to all our esteemed guests. Our chief guest for today, Mr. Harsh Mariwala. Our guest of honor, Mrs. Mrunal Pawar. Our respected director, sir, Professor B.B. Ahuja. Deputy director, Professor M.S. Utaune. Deans and HODs, distinguished guests, faculties, startups, students, and my dear friends. I, Anjali Nair, core team member of Bhaus Excel, welcome you all to the inauguration ceremony of Pune Startup Fest 2021 with the team Bolstering Innovation a blueprint for the future. The day we've all been waiting for is finally here. Today, we have gathered to inaugurate Pune Startup Fest 2021, which is under the patronage of Startup India, Skill India, Agni, and Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell. We also have collaborations with Sakar Group as media partners, Amazon Web Services AWS as our web services partner, Thai Pune AIC Pinnacle, Pune Management Association, IDO, Startup Brand as Outreach Partners, Pune Open Coffee Club as its ecosystem partner, Vadhwani Foundation, Toastmaster for Pune Entrepreneurs, Ignite as Community Partners, Maharashtra State Innovation Society as Knowledge Partner, Venture Wolf as Investment Partner, 95 Big FM as Radio Partner, DU Express, NoFest.com as online media partners, Youth Incorporated as youth media partner, and ED Times as blog partner. We will now have the COAP Geek sung by Purva to mark the start of this auspicious ceremony. चित्रते चित्रते चदे खड़े शारदे तुझा कृपे चित्रते चरे खड़े अहंते सस्पर्श दे विनय पूर्ण लाघवी मम यशा तवाढते ती तुझी चतुरवी ती तुझी चतुरवी ये थे परंपरे चा अभिमान व्यर्थ नाही सामर्थ्य सत्य जिद्द कोणा संबंध नाही कोणा संबंध नाही आज चे अंकुर त्याचा आसमंती सूर्य होती प्रार्थनाची शिवधनुष्य राम इथले प्रस्त करती ज्ञान येथे सर्जनाची कास धरते निर्मिताना माणसाला माणसाचे भान आहे चालताना भान आहे चालताना विश्वस्त जे पाहे येथे कलंदरा सृजनात धुंद होणे येथे तर्क नाही येथे तर्क नाही येथे परंपरेचा अभिमान व्यर्थ नाही सामर्थ्य सत्य जिद्द कोणा संबंध नाही कोणा संबंध नाही पंथ आहे नेहमीचा गुरुवंतांचा बळाचा पालकांची थाप आहे विनय ही निष्ठाप आहे या अशा या सर्जनांचा माणसाचा गौरवाचा स्रोत हा निर्व्याज आहे दश दिशा नागाज आहे दश दिशा नागाज आहे उद्देश जिंकण्याचा येथे जिंक आहे मधुकोश निर्मितीचा याहून रंग नाही याहून रंग नाही येथे 
परंपरे चा अभिमान व्यर्थ नाही सामर्थ्य सत्य जिद्द कोणास वंद नाही कोणास वंद नाही कोणास वंद नाही Thank you so much, Purva. I now invite our ESL faculty advisor, Dr. Madhuri Karnig, ma'am, to introduce us all to ESL and Pune Startup Fest. a very good morning and warm welcome to all of you today's chief guest mr harsh mariwala founder and chairman of merico industries guest of honor mrs mrunal pawar managing director saka media group our director professor bibi ahuja deputy director professor ms sutawne deans hods distinguished guests my faculty colleagues and participating startups and student friends it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the inauguration ceremony of pune startup fest 2021 the theme this year is bolstering innovations a blueprint of the future it is in accordance with the vision of institute innovation council of college of engineering pune the vision is expressed like this cultivating critical thinking inventing innovations and encouraging entrepreneurship for creation of wealth bahus entrepreneurship cell is the integral part of institute innovation council and takes forward the same philosophy bahus e cell coep is driven by students guided by and mentored by faculty and supported by college it fosters the spirit of entrepreneurship and encourages innovation among students by conducting various activities and competitions at national and international level some of the competitions conducted are idea competition pitching competition we plan we also conduct competitions for failure analysis of big companies budget and many more these competitions make students aware of various facets of the world of entrepreneurship we have been hosting this startup fest since last 3 years this year for the first time it is virtual all these years we have been getting more than 100 startups and more than 60 investors mentors and a quite a good amount was promised as an investment last year it was 3.5 crore rupees on an average 500 students get an opportunity to do internship with the startups along with that we also organize startup panel discussions investor panel discussions expert motivational lectures the organization of such a two day mega event opens up an opportunity for students to understand startup ecosystem and to be a part of it expert lectures and interactions with the entrepreneurs about their successful as well as failed attempts motivates them to be job creators rather than becoming job seekers the management and execution of various such events gives them hands on experience of many important life skills all such endeavors of students are encouraged and supported by our director sir wholeheartedly and we get all the help from jibkhana and bhav institute the feedbacks we receive from startups investors guests are quite encouraging last year we had mr srinivas chudru a former board member ola group and now an entrepreneur he remarked that it was a very well organized fest and lovely platform to share the thoughts so such encouragements give us energy to conduct the fest next year i hope that interaction among startups investors mentors and students that take place in these two days is fruitful and we get some momentous learnings also 
this year we have seven zones technological agricultural health and lifestyle student startups social startups and also the startups breaking the pandemic and innovation zone by interacting with each other there is possibility of collaborations among themselves the innovation zone gives opportunity to those who may not have a startup but may have a patent or an idea to present in general we are trying to learn and improve every year and provide opportunity to many more people joining us i wish that all the startups and visitors have a good experience this year and takeaways in the following two days thank you Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate your support in taking ECEL and Pune Startup Fest to newer heights each year. Today, we have Mrs. Brunal Pawar in conversation with Mr. Harsh Pariwala about his journey, his experiences, and his advice for the new generation of entrepreneurs. We are extremely happy to have Mrs. Brunal Pawar, Director of Sakar Media Group, as our guest of honor. Apart from her role at Sakar, Mrs. Brunal Pawar. is involved in multiple social initiatives including her role as the founder of we are in this together and social for action thank you ma'am for being a part of our fest a very warm welcome to our chief guest mr harsh mariwala founder and chairman of the fortune 500 company mariko and founder of kaya limited in 1990 mr mariwala set up a new venture Mariko, which now, with products like parachute and sapola, has become synonymous with Indian households. In 2012, he set up Ascent Foundation as a peer learning platform for entrepreneurs. We are extremely humbled to have you here, sir. Thank you for joining us. I now request our director, Professor B. B. Ahuja, sir, to kindly say a few words and address the audience. thank you anjali good morning everyone our chief guest for this year's pune startup fest mr harsh mariwala the founder and chairman of mariko and also chairman and managing director of kaya limited we also have with us this morning our guest of honor this is runal pawar director of sakar media group my faculty colleagues and dear friends it gives me immense pleasure to welcome on behalf of our board of governors of college of engineering pune our faculty our staff our students the man of the masses the man of the millennium the man of mariko who transformed bombay oil mix limited into mariko of the day yes friends i'm referring to mr harsh mariwala founder and chairman of mariko limited which is listed as a fortune in the 500 company with a turnover of over us 5 billion dollars we are all eager to hear the secret of success the success which is rooted in innovation which is rooted in his entrepreneurial spirit which is rooted in the research that he has undertaken to grow his organization we regard him as a man of rich wisdom of dedication and commitment who has emerged as a business leader in a short span of 30 years as a person of reckoning in our country and as i said 
He is a household name today. Sir, we are privileged to have you with us this morning to inaugurate our Pune Startup Fest, our humble effort by our students and faculty to grow the ecosystem for entrepreneurship at College of Engineering. <coughs> and to make this happen today, we are grateful to Mrs. Mrunal Pawar, our guest of honor. In fact, we owe the presence of Mr. Hush Mariwala today with us to Mrs. Mrunal Pawar as she was able to request and also to inaugurate the startup fest today. Mrs. Munal Pawar too, as director of Sakal Media Group, is a person of radiant simplicity and humility. And though she has been working in various trusts for a social cause as trustee of the Sakal India Foundation, as trustee of the Sakal Social Foundation, as trustee of the Pune Blind School for Girls and Boys. She too has committed herself to the cause of suffering humanity. She is with us here this morning as our guest of honor. And I was reminded of this adage. Very often when we encounter a task, we ask ourselves, within ourselves, this question arises. <clears throat> the question is, what's in it for me? Any task that we get, we ask ourselves. But here it is Mrs. Murnal Pawar, who says, we are in this together. We are in this together. She has founded this foundation. She has heralded this foundation where she has a service cause for society. Ma'am, I welcome you too on behalf of the College of Engineering Pune this morning to also inaugurate our startup fest. Who better than these two people today to give us, to show us the way to startups in the country. I also take this opportunity as my first word of gratitude to our Chairman Board of Governors, Mr. Pratap Kawar. He is also the Chairman Board of Directors of the Bhav Institute. And he has empowered us, helped us in growing the ecosystem of entrepreneurship at COEP. He has but one dream, one vision for COEP, that if all students coming out of COEP can become entrepreneurs and can become the future of our country. Thank you, sir, for such empowerment. Mr. Mariwala, sir, you will be glad to know that we have an incubation setup center at Pune, at COEP. It's a center which is open to all students, first generation, second generation, next generation entrepreneurs who want to in get incubated at this center, which is called as the Bhau Institute of Innovation, Entrepreneurship and Leadership. Currently, sir, you will be happy to know we have about 75 startups being nurtured in the Bhav Institute of Innovation, Entrepreneurship, Leadership. Some are virtual, some are physically being incubated. And this center provides an opportunity for each and every young person who wants to stand on his own feet to get access to state of technology, state of art labs at COEP, College of Engineering, Pune, and also build their products and services. The Pune Startup Fest, which started in 2019, it's a recent initiative of College of Engineering Pune. It's in its third year now. The baby is still learning to grow, to walk on its own. 
in its third year we have large number of students who get an opportunity to showcase to talent to showcase their talent and innovative ideas of their products and services they get an opportunity to meet the mentors it's a platform where the investors look at them and help them grow their startups this phase is only to bring about churning of eager minds who want to do something different who want to be innovative in their thought process who want to be the future leaders of tomorrow for our country and what better person than you sir and mrs munhal pawar to inaugurate this pune startup fest i'm sure we are all all the participants including me are eager to listen to your views as to what it means to be an entrepreneur today and what it means to serve the society today with these few words i once again welcome you all and i thank both our chief guest mr harsh mariwala and our guest of honor mrs munal pawar both of them for finding time for us today and for inspiring and motivating our students and faculty and all those who want to do something different in life thank you thank you once again over to you anjali thank you so much director sir. and thank you so much for leading us at this time with your relentless support so now coming to the most awaited part of the ceremony the interview of mr harsh mariwala may be starting in a minute Thank you, everyone, for being patient. I now request Brunal, ma'am, to kindly take over. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to um, thank Professor Ahuja for his kind words. I feel immensely humbled and filled with gratitude. Thank you so much. Namaste, good morning, and a very warm welcome to all the attendees participating in the third edition of Pune's Fest. I would like to thank Professor B. B. Ahuja, Director, COEP, for extending such a warm and heartfelt invitation, and to Shri Harsh Mariwala ji for graciously accepting to be the chief guest in today's inauguration ceremony. COEP and Sakal Media Group also share a special connect, as Professor, as uh, Mr. Ahuja mentioned. My father-in-law is also and the chairman of Sakal Media Group. Uh, Shri Pratap Pawar has been the director of COEP since 2004, and at present is its chairman. As you're all aware, Sakal has been in the forefront of social causes and is an ardent advocate and facilitator of social change and social transformation. Our group's vision has led to many initiatives, the newest ones being on mental health and creating of a crowdfunding platform. I do hope that all the startups, investors, students, and mentors will participate, contribute, and benefit from our various outreach programs. Today, I'm especially honored to have with us Shri Harsh Mariwala ji. Although he's already been introduced a couple of times by everyone, I'll still uh, briefly mention my very short introduction and not take too much time. Mr. Harsh Mariwala leads Marico Limited as its chairman, and he's also the chairman and managing director of Kaya Limited. Over the past three decades, Mr. Mariwala has transformed a traditional commodities-driven business into a leading consumer products and services company. Mr. Mariwala's entrepreneurial drive and passion for innovation 
has prompted him to establish the Marico Innovation Foundation in 2003, which acts as a catalyst to fuel innovation in India. In 2012, he also started Ascent Foundation as a peer-to-peer -peer platform for entrepreneurs, which enables them to share, exchange ideas, insights, experiences. Sharp Ventures is the family office of the Harsh Mariwala family. They partner with unique businesses with the potential for significant growth. He's also founded the Mariwala Health Initiative in 2015 with the philanthropic aim of giving back to society. His health initiative is a leading point of the field of mental health in India. Thank you so much, Harshi, for giving us your time this morning and tracing today's inauguration ceremony to request you to open the uh, Pune Startup Fest and say a few words to our budding entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you, Ronal. And uh, uh, I'm truly honored to be with all of you. Uh, I think Ronal approached me about one or two months back and then uh, it culminated in today's event. So thank uh, all of you. Uh, thank College of Engineering Pune and the uh, eCell event as well as the Pune Startup Fest. Uh, I am not clear, Munal, is it going to be my talk or is it going to be a Q&A question? Because earlier I was told that, you know, it will be a dialogue, but I am not clear. No, um, uh, the first half an hour is going to be your talk. And in the last okay. 15 minutes, I have made a list of all the questions that have come to you from all the students. Perfect, so I've, I've curated them. Thank you. Thank you. So I think I'm so happy that all of you are looking at entrepreneurship as as your career in future. Uh, I have a very, very strong uh, passion as well as respect for entrepreneurs because I strongly feel that all entrepreneurs add a lot of value to all the stakeholders. And when I'm talking of stakeholders, it means uh, themselves as promoters. It means to their employees, uh, to their customers to the associates they're working with, and finally to the society. So it's they're playing a very, very critical role in driving the growth trajectory of India. And I would want more and more individuals, more youngsters to turn entrepreneurs uh, in future. And towards that, as was introduced earlier, I am also uh, running an uh, running a organization which is helping entrepreneurs scale up. Uh, we have something like 700 entrepreneurs already enrolled in this journey. And if any of you have reached a certain level of turnover, you're most welcome to uh, log into our website, ascent.org.in. Uh, it's free and I can assure you that it will be a lot of learning. But we have certain conditions in terms of a certain minimum turnover. And there is a certain uh, group discussion where you need to pass that test. Having said that, I want to talk a little bit about uh, my own journey as an entrepreneur. I started at a very young age uh, in business at the age of 20. And um, I was let loose by my father in terms of allowing me to do whatever I wanted to do. At that time, it was a completely family managed organization where my father being the eldest uh, and three of uh, his brothers, my uncles, were running the business and I was just I was the first person from the next generation to to join the business. Uh, I wanted to study further uh, to do my MBA. I could not get admission into uh, MBA school in India. At that time, there were very few MBA schools. And uh, I, my father didn't allow me to go abroad for studies. So I, like an obedient son, went and joined the family business. And looking back, I think it was a good decision because if I had gone abroad to do my MBA and come back, I would have been very frustrated. Our office was located in the heart of commodity markets in Masjid Bandar. And it was very difficult to attract talent. It was a completely family-owned, uh, family-managed organization. So I think it was a good thing that I went through a learning curve and uh, didn't come with fully like a MBA and I would have got far more frustrated. So if I look back at my own journey, you know, what has led to uh, uh, establishing as an entrepreneur? And I think the first thing as an entrepreneur, if any of you are looking at uh, being an entrepreneur, is to identify the right opportunity. You, know? um, you have to dig deep in terms of your consumer or customer and identify that unmet need with that consumer has it. And many a times that customer themselves will not realize that they have a certain unmet need. So one has to go dig deeper in terms of what is their unmet need which you, you can fulfill. 
it's a highly competitive environment today and if you start a me too business which others are doing it will be relatively difficult to succeed so i have a strong belief that uh, innovation is a very very important part of an entrepreneurial journey and if one has to succeed you have to do something which is unique which adds value to the customer and not unique by itself so it could be anything innovative it could be a product it could be a service it could be a process but ultimately it has to add value to the customer and depending on the kind of business one is in uh, you can uh, you can uh, do different things for example in consumer products it's it's most important to identify an unmet need for uh, for a pharma business it could be leveraging on a technology and developing a new drug for a service business it could be to do ensure that highest levels of service orientation in the hospitality business so i think the key thing once you identify what area you want to enter in terms of a business you need to dig deeper and you know go and find out what is unique business model which you have which will not become a similar to what others are doing because if you do a meet to as i said earlier you your chances of success will be much much lesser and if i look back at my own journey you know when i started uh, coconut oil most of coconut oil was so loose we have this parachute brand name and uh, all the all the business was in tins and we said that can we actually convert that packed coconut oil from tin to plastics because tins is is more expensive compared to plastics it's uh, plastics is more convenient to use and it's relatively more attractive to keep on the on your dressing table compared to a tin it is more also convenient to use because you can pour the plastic bottle as against you have to dip your fingers in a tin can so we thought we had a winner on hand and uh, uh, we did some research amongst the retailers at that time and realized that there was huge resistance to uh, to launching or to storing product uh, coconut oil in plastic because apparently about 8 or 10 years prior to us entering that segment somebody else had launched coconut oil in plastics and it was a disaster because it was launched in a in a square shaped bottle and a lot of oil on the outer surface of the bottle um, led to uh, rat biting in retailer shop when they closed the shop in the evening and when they opened not only the product was destroyed but even the shop got spoiled so virtually the retailer was saying we are not going to stock it but as an entrepreneur you never give up you know you go on trying if you are convinced that you have a, a good thing in your hand so we we decided to go back to the drawing board and ensure that we have a round shape bottle where the rat will find it difficult to get a grip we went to our packaging department and told them that uh, it, there should not be any oil on the outer surface of the bottle and then we did all that and we kept a few bottles in a rat cage for a day or two we took pictures and nothing happened i think that was enough of a proof to uh, to us and to say that okay we can now give an assurance to our retailers that uh, even if there is a damage we will compensate you and uh, we converted the whole market from tin to plastics it took almost 5 years for us to convert the market from tin to plastics but looking back at one level it looked very simple the conversion but at the same time it needed a lot of uh thinking in terms of execution and how do you increase plastic sales and uh, that um helped us gain tremendous market share we had a market share of something like 10% before we launched plastics and over 4 5 years because of this so called innovation in packaging our market share jumped up to 50% so i think that just reinforced the belief in me that you know innovation plays a very very important role the other thing i want to talk about is we have also looking back and we have pioneered a certain businesses or certain uh, products which were not existing earlier for example a brand like safola was positioned as good for the heart and nobody had taken that positioning and we came up with a product which uh, which helps in that we have entered into now safola foods so we launched the safola oats at that time we realized that oats was uh, Uh, a me to product like uh, quaker oats or kellogg's oats so we went back to our customer and tried to find out from them what will uh, uh, make them buy our oats and uh, i think the insighting revealed that indians like uh, savory breakfast they don't like sweet breakfast 
So can you do something like what Maggie did to Noodles in terms of offering a range of oats which were savory oats? So we did research in, in terms of taste profiles in each state and came up with a range of savory oats, masala oats, pao bhaji oats and many others. And we opened a new segment in the oats in which we almost have our 80% market share. That segment itself is worth about 150 or 200 crores today and it's growing at almost 25, 30%. So that was a pioneering move and I think many, many examples I can give from my own journey. Uh, I revive a brand which uh, was launched for, for starching clothes because at that time, uh, starching was, uh, took about 15 minutes, half an hour for the housewife to starch clothes. And we said that if you can offer a product which can immediately starch the clothes by putting the starch in the water and dipping the clothes, then we will actually give a lot of convenience to the housewife. And I think that brand was launched. Even a brand like Medicar, which we acquired from Procter & Gamble, uh, it's an anti-lice uh, shampoo we acquired. And we realized that shampooing in rural areas is not prevalent. If you offer the same product in an oil format, we would actually be able to increase market size because people are used to using oil. And our sales just doubled within one year after acquiring the brand. Um, a business like Kai also was a pioneering in, uh, move in skincare. So what I want to say is that we have had multiple uh, uh, ways of increasing our business through innovations and pioneering opportunities. And I would urge each, uh, each um, entrepreneur or potential entrepreneur to identify what they can do uh, in making this happen. Uh, this is a continuous process. You can't just say that I've innovated once and stop, you know. On a perpetual basis, you need to innovate and you need to pioneer. So for that, you need to create a culture of innovation to ensure that there's the innovation pipeline is very, very strong. But before going into the culture part, I just want to say that in my own journey, I've had multiple failures. So it's okay to fail. And uh, prior to launching uh, our Safola uh, oats, savory oats, we had launched Safola baked snacks in Bombay about uh, seven or eight years back. At that time, there were no baked snacks, and we felt that uh, with health awareness increasing, if we are able to offer uh, non fried snacks in terms of baked snacks, we would be able to get good market uh, through that uh, route. Unfortunately, what happened was our product development and our marketing felt that because it was under the brand name Safola, health was given more importance than taste. So we had a very, very healthy product, but on taste, it was a little bit of compromise because we went overboard on health. And to a consumer, especially in food and in impulsive food like snacks, taste was the most important thing. So we learned that lesson and then we incorporated the learnings out of that failure in our oats, savory oats journey, which has worked very well. Uh, so there have been multiple failures, but out of each failure, there has been some learning. And you know, we've applied that in our future journey, and we uh, we have done well after incorporating that learning. I'll go now into uh, the importance of talent and culture. Uh, let me begin by saying that there is war for talent. You know, if you are thinking of um, starting a new business, you have to treat hiring like marketing. You know, you have to attract very good talent, and for that to be done, you have to market yourself as an organization. So how do you market yourself is the is the big challenge. I would say that each of you need to identify what is unique about you in terms of attracting talent. Uh, when we formed Marico in the year 1990, we identified empowerment as our employee value proposition, which was unique compared to what others were doing. We attract talent from leading um, FMCG companies like Levers, Doctors, and these are multinational corporations where empowerment is much lesser because a lot of decisions take take place in their headquarters uh, in some other country. Uh, and in our case, we said that we don't have any headquarters. We are the headquarters. So we said that, you know, what experience you will undergo working with us will be far more enriching because we'll be empowering you. And I think that worked in terms of attracting talent. Uh, so the key thing is, what is the unique thing you're offering? It could be anything which is unique compared to your competition, but you need to uh, identify what is the unique uh, uh, experience you're going to offer to potential employees, and you need to leverage that. 
so we in when we formed merico in the year 1990 we uh, we recruited some like 40 or 50 managers from different backgrounds and each one coming with their own set of beliefs uh, in terms of how they should be managing people what kind of products we should be doing and for each decision there were different uh, individuals were uh, were reacting differently and at that time i realized that if we had to succeed as an organization we we need to identify what are our values and how do decisions take place and can we can our values guide our members to to arrive at decision uh, values and culture is not an end by itself it's a means to an end i was very clear based on my earlier experiences that innovation is very critical to succeed so how do we create an innovative organization culture was one of our key challenges when we finalized our values and what how can innovation happen uh, in an organization so for innovation to happen in an organization you need a people who are young who are diverse in terms of their backgrounds it could be gender diversity it could be educational diversity it could be nationality diversity but when you get diverse people they come with a different background and when you put all of them in a culture which is very open and transparent they start talking about their own belief, their experiences, and that leads to a lot of new ideas. So it's very important to have people who are diverse, uh, who are empowered, uh, and put them in an open culture. We also have a very flat organization structure where a lot of empowerment is given to people because the structure is very flat. And we, most importantly, we encourage people to take risks and, and experiment. If somebody takes a certain risk and experiments, and if that experiment does not succeed uh, it is very important for the organization not to punish that failure if at all a punishment is given in terms of giving less increment or not uh, promoting that person even though that person is worthy of promotion will mean it mean that you're giving a very really wrong signal uh, organizationally and people will stop taking this so to sum up organizational culture arises out of the um, uh, attracting good talent, young talent, uh, bring in diversity, have a flat structure, empower them, encourage them to take risks, uh, don't punish them for failures. And if you really want to do risk, then you can prototype that in a very small way. In, in our case, we can prototype our consumer products through a chain of uh, retail stores or in a particular town. And we go on doing that because otherwise to launch a product nationally would mean huge uh, outlays in terms of advertising and things like that. So normally before we uh, launch our product nationally, we prototype it and it's like a live lab. There are limitations to market research. Uh, of course, one can do market research, but all the answers you'll not get through market research and you have to be present in the marketplace. And then when you are prototyping something, you are you're actually studying what is the consumer reaction to pricing, product, um, packaging, and if need be, go on making those changes. And once you achieve those action standards, then you launch it. If you don't achieve the action standard, it's better to say that, okay, it's not succeeded, so let's, uh, let's not go ahead with the national launch. So uh, I think that's how we, we finalized the culture. And cult culture building is a very, very, uh, I think it takes time. It takes three to five years. Uh, how do you build in an openness within an organization was a big challenge. So we, we were moving into a new office and the brief given to the initial designer was that it should reflect openness. So we we had an office where people could see each other, including me. Uh, we have an open house with all our employees, including our workmen, and they are encouraged to ask any questions, any awkward questions to management. We have training programs um, for all our managers which promote openness. We have relationship reviews with managers and their peers uh, talking about how, how our relationship is. So when you take openness from different angles, you are reinforcing it on a perpetual basis. And I think that's what leads to an open culture. And the same thing is how do you do trust, you know? So at that time, we, uh, we said that can we do away with uh, sick leave because we trust you? Can we do away with casual leave? Because if you have casual work, you can take. So you are not entitled to a sick or casual leave, but we, we trust you. We did away with musters in the office. We also did away with uh, authorization of your expense, which you are incurring on behalf of the company uh, to be authorized by your boss. And we said that we trust you and you can self-authorize your claim against whatever expense you've incurred for the company. So you give again a very strong signal on trust from the organization and people uh, 
understand that this this is very very valuable in the company and the big challenge is when new people come in you know how do they ultimately be a part of the culture and value so we spend one full day in terms of talking about why values are important why innovation is important uh, and what would we expect from them uh, when they join the organization actually much prior prior to that when you recruit a person also be we go deeper in terms of what are their beliefs of the individual and if there is a misfit then we may not hire that person uh, i think the third point i want to emphasize is that uh, governance is very very important some entrepreneurs think that i will practice high standards of governance only when i reach a certain level of uh, business in terms of size but i strongly feel that uh, irrespective of the size governance plays a very very important role in law in an entrepreneur's journey because if you do something if you take shortcuts it will you are seeing sowing seeds of taking shortcuts within the organization people will go on taking shortcuts when you grow up also so you have to do things in the right way uh, don't take shortcuts and i look at governance beyond that because many a times there are conflicts between a stakeholder and the organization so as a promoter i may i have a promoter interest and i also have a organization interest and when i stepped down as managing director four five years back uh, there was a conflict in terms of what should i be doing because i had not thought of stepping down but uh, it so happened that the person who is now the managing director uh, he would have left if if i had not stepped down i also had the pressure of okay can i sh- what should i do normally in india there is a hierarchical society and everybody expects that your children will will uh, will follow you in terms of the role so i took a, a different decision of appointing a professional and uh, i think while deciding that i said that the organization interest should come first and so that's where i'm saying that there was a conflict between me as a promoter and and the organization interest and the same thing would happen when when there's a very uh, capable employee who has worked with you for many years and performed very well but at some stage that person starts losing relevance uh, because the business has become more complex or the business has grown and uh, what do you do with such a person you know uh, there's a conflict should you reward loyalty or should you uh, look at the organization interest and i always have a thumb rule that the organization the interest comes first so it it is a good thing that if you have a weak performer especially at senior and top levels it's better that you dispense with him uh, him or her uh, do it in a humane manner you don't ask him to him to go straight away give that person a chance but still if they don't it doesn't work out it's better to to do it in a humane manner and uh in all cases where i have done that uh, that person has been able to find a calling in terms of finding some other opportunity which was able to leverage that person's strengths so i think these are some of my thoughts in in driving my own business just to sum up you need to create a right to win in terms of innovation pioneering or depending on the kind of business you have whether it's patent or service levels which is differentiated in a highly competitive environment and then only you will set yourself in terms of success in the business number 2 you need to have very good talent for which you need to create the right employee value proposition and create a culture in our case it was innovation it could be something else if you are a service oriented organization it could be service levels and finally don't take shortcuts on governance look at governance not only uh, in terms of compliance and regulations but beyond that in terms of ensuring that whenever there are conflicts uh, you are able to look at the organization interest first uh let me just uh, add a few things in terms of uh, what uh, i think what makes an entrepreneur uh, i would say that uh, most important thing is that insatiable curiosity in terms of how the world is operating and that can only come through reading interacting with others dialogues observations internet researches and things like that number 2 i would say is that you need to have grit you know they say passion is important a passion of course is important but many a times when we are passionate and if we have a setback we tend to give up you know so you need to combine passion with uh, determination and, and perseverance and then only you will get grit so i like the word grit because it combines passion with determination and perseverance number 3 is i think each one of us is born with a god given strength the key thing for us is to 
identify what is our God given strength and leverage our business based on our strength. For example, I'm not good at uh, understanding of technology, but I'm good at understanding of consumer needs. So I had to be in a business which was not so technology dependent. So I think the key thing is what is your God given strength and leverage on that strength in terms of choosing an entrepreneur business or or vocation which is leveraging on your strengths. The next thing I want to talk about is, you know, everybody says you need to have a vision. My viewpoint is a little different. You, uh, of course, when you start a business, you you start with an unidentified need or wherever there is an opportunity to grow. But at that stage, no entrepreneur has a clear vision, you know, because the environment is, is changing so fast that it is very difficult to imagine what will happen maybe three or five years later. The whole digital journey has happened in the last few years and it's got accelerated in the pandemic. Nobody could have predicted pandemic and what could have been the implications of that. So beyond a point, you need to have a broad direction as far as the business is concerned. And don't get too focused on having a three or five year uh, business plan, which uh, which will be dependent on the environment, the technology development, as well as how the world is going to change. When uh, the next point I would like to say is that, you know, Whenever you have a set of negotiations to deal with, whether it's labor negotiations or whether it is negotiating with your whatever customer, try and arrive at a win-win uh, solution. Uh, but while arriving at a win-win solution, don't compromise middle way through. You know, at the end of the deliberation, both parties should feel that they have won and they should be happy with that deliberation. You know, um, I think at some stage in your journey, one would uh, look at uh, reinventing oneself. So if you're an entrepreneur, you when you start, you're doing things. And when you grow, you start recruiting people. Uh, at that time, your role shifts from doing things to getting things done from others. And once you get a certain scale in terms of size, uh, your role changes from getting things done from others to influencing others. So I think you need to evaluate. And I think I've seen many entrepreneurs faltering on that because they want to have a very, very close control in terms of what uh, they have built up, they, they are not willing to delegate, they are not willing to take risks. Sometimes the risk taking may not work out, but unless you take risks, unless you take good talent and delegate, you will not be able to grow. And at some stage from doing things, you'll getting things done, you'll have to go into influencing others, you know. So depending on the stage of business, you'll have to go on changing your, uh, and you'll have to reinvent yourself in terms of how you're getting your work done. And finally, I want to talk about purpose. I think all of us uh, have a purpose in life. It is just not uh, building a business or making money, but uh, beyond a point, you know, you you have to start searching yourself. What what is what is the purpose you have for yourself, and what can you do to make this world a better place to live in? So again, depending on individual, one would have to identify the purpose and work towards that because that will give you far more satisfaction than just succeeding in in a business or making financial gains so i think these are uh, uh, some of my thoughts if some of you are students still and you want to uh, start uh, a business and many a times people have asked me what kind of organization should i join ideally speaking if you have a little bit clear idea in terms of what sectors you want to go in i would look at um, taking up a job in those kind of organizations and I would look at more, look look at uh, joining small and mid-sized organizations than very large organizations. Because then, if you are a part of a very large organization, you will get a very limited role. It's like having a, it's like being a small frog in a big pond. But if you are joining a startup or a small organization, that entrepreneur is dependent on you. So you will get much more holistic view of the business, and you are a big frog in a small pond. Uh, there is no right answer. You'll have to evaluate that. But by and large, in my opinion, this would this would work out, you know. So I think with this, uh, I just want to end my talk, and maybe I'll uh, I'll uh, ask Mirnal to uh, grill me in whatever questions she wants to ask, you know. Thank you so much, sir. This is uh, turning out to be a splendid chat, and we are absolutely loving all these elaborate tips and learnings that you're sharing with us. Uh, before we get real eager to listen to um, Mural Ma'am's questions and your answers to them, before that, on behalf of Pune Startup Fest, 
I would like to welcome Mr. Pratap Rao Baba, Chairman, Board of Governors, QAP. Baba. <laughs> I know Pratap to say hello. <laughs> welcome, sir. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Thank you, sir. I came as a visitor, not as a participant. So uh, thank you, Mr. Marivana. It was very enlightening. Yeah, I spent my journey in a similar way, in a smaller scale. But I understood every philosophy, every uh, word you said, and I totally agree and appreciate. I hope it becomes a talk and guideline for all our uh, people. Obviously, we are working ahead, we are progressing, and we want to go a long way I mean, uh, to serve the country, serve the society. So this initiative taken by Murala and you, I am really uh, thankful, very happy, and I'm sure this will be useful to the society. Thanks a lot. Yes, Murala. Thank you, sir. And all, ma'am, uh, we now request you to carry on with the questions. We are eager to listen to what you have for Mr. Marivan. Yes. First of all, it's amazing that you all managed to spot him, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Hajji, for sharing your vision, your ideas, your enthusiasm, and a lot of things really stuck with me. And I've just written down just a few points so that just to summarize, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, your talk, you know, which was the first thing was about um, identifying unmet needs and to really, uh, you know, dig deeper to find a unique business model. So, uh, you know, so that we're not another me too, and there is some, uh, you know, some unique, uh, uh, you know, business idea. Um, and you also said innovation is a continuous process and one of the most important things I think for all of us to learn also is that it's okay to fail, uh, to be able to attract new talent by marketing yourself, to get people of diverse backgrounds, um, to have a lot of training programs and open culture, um, governance and no shortcuts um, and entrepreneurs should always, uh, you know, be curious and to combine passion with determination, which you called grit, uh, to identify one's uh, strength rather than to have, you know, just a vision of three to five years to have a broad direction and to have a sense of purpose. So all of these things really, really stuck with me and I'm sure it's immensely benefited every, all the students and all the, uh, you know, young entrepreneurs are also listening uh, to you today. And that just brings me to one of my first questions. All of these questions have actually come in from all the students and I've just put together a few of them. What is the role of startups in economic prosperity and how can it help India to deal with some giants like China? <laughs> So I think uh, startups, and I reckon that all the startups would be offering something which is innovative uh, or unique. Uh, I think they can play a very, very important role in driving India's growth. And I see great opportunities for startup, and especially in areas where India is backward. And I would say that we have a huge journey to cover up in whether it's education or agriculture or healthcare. And we've seen what happened through the mobile revolution. Can we do a similar thing in healthcare, education, agriculture uh, through the startup journey. And I can assure you that, you know, India can actually, we have great opportunities. There are lots and lots of technologies which are emerging uh, internationally, whether it's digital or AI or whatever else. And you can combine many technologies to, to arrive at a new business model. But uh, all I can say is, yes, startups are going to play a very, very important role. And I would just like to ensure that they don't remain startup, but they are able to grow successful into much larger organizations because you have to ultimately grow you know you don't want to have a startup which will fold up after a few years so you have to ensure that from small to medium to large uh, the, the journey has to continue you have to make a big impact and i think i can all i can say is entrepreneurs will change india and entrepreneurs have to change india and we can't be dependent on the government to say that okay they have to uh, they have to ensure that the uh, country succeeds and grows you know Sure, absolutely. Uh, I'm just pitching in uh, because I've been reading a book on uh, China's progress. Okay. Based on AI, and it's very interesting. I'm requesting all my staff, my members to read it. But some of your facts are very, very revealing. 
they they began the startup career with copying okay. and uh, that became so fierce that they thought this copying is not enough we have to be better so having mm -hmm. done the technology ability they went on improving the product Correct. then started their own products Correct. that the government came forward the policies came forward and one visionary uh, politician made a statement that that appealed to the masculine startup culture which yeah. was supported by their system of uh, cities mayors politicians bureaucrats financial institutions and today you yesterday there was a news by uh, chinese premier that they have overcome poverty line okay. and that is not happen and accidentally that has happened for years because the whole china is charged for that Mm -hmm. They're enterprising, they're ambitious, they want to grow, they want to beat America. And I think th this spirit is taking China uh, ahead of us or ahead of the world, not the uh, gunpoint. And th that is something people have to understand. So, startup is very, very important. Uh, mm -hmm. More the startups, more wealth creation, more knowledge creation, more employment. And I think uh, we as a society, we as a government, we as a bureaucracy must come together to see that. Uh, we do create and prosper together. Otherwise, it becomes in pockets. I mean, th that doesn't serve the purpose. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for uh, sharing that experience. Yeah. Uh, in Budget 21, how do you see the government's proposal to incentivize? Um... <laughs> <laughs> so, I think uh, I'm not an expert or economist, but I think clearly the budget is... Uh, uh, brought in some changes in the way the government has thought from welfare the government has gone more towards investment uh, from taxing more the government has gone into raising resources through monetization and privatization and these are um, i think very important developments and very important signals in terms of uh, moving forward because everybody was fearing that the tax rates would go up but luckily nothing happened on that front and the fact that most of the investments are going to take place through the investment route will meet as well as through privatization will mean that uh, the industry and the business will play a far more important role in future which will create many more opportunities for for newer entrepreneurs so i see a fundamental shift in terms of the government's thinking in this year's budget and the government also the third was that okay the fiscal deficit was decided to keep at a much higher level so I think that's uh, that's very good. But ultimately, I think the proof of the pudding is in eating, and it's important that it is executed well. Uh, these are all intentions of privatization, monetization, investment. So I would want to see that it is executed very well, so that you know the impact of this is felt by all the entrepreneurs and all of us in terms of increased uh, growth rates. Sure. Um, you've maintained that the ability to think differently has been a crucial factor in building Maricot what it was today. So, you, uh, you know, how can new entrepreneurs today adopt this frame of mind when you did? I mean, when you started your company, how did you come to adopt this, uh, you know, <laughs> thinking? Or did you have any mentors in, in the process? So, I didn't have any mentors. It, uh... I think out of trial and error, I've learned. I decided I launched some need to produce this. It didn't do well. And then I, whenever we innovated, it succeeded. So through a lot of trial and error, through my own failures, uh, successes, I started learning and uh, defining our way forward in terms of innovating. And, you know, whenever we innovated, as I said earlier, in, in uh, Parachute or uh, any other products, we it had a discontinuous impact on our business. So I think my initial years of... Uh, trying different things uh, uh, i think that helps me in terms of arriving at a journey which uh, which i'm able to focus in terms of what we call the right to win and you know uh, have the culture of innovation and all that but uh, i think it has come out of trial and error i think that's been my yeah absolutely what difference in attitude and vision do you see in entrepreneurs today other than you know, the entrepreneurs maybe one or two decades back. So I think the biggest difference is that uh, I think the whole ecosystem for entrepreneurs has developed in India. It still has to develop, but compared to maybe one or two decades back, 
it has developed in the sense that you have many other different types of funding options available, whether it is seed funding or whether it is private equity or whether it is uh, a bank or so. Ultimately, whenever I when I started, those options were not available. And uh, these players, they don't even just offer funds, but they also offer a lot of advice in terms of running a business. We have a whole host of consultants. You also have an incubation cell. So the ecosystem in terms of setting up a business uh, has developed in the country. I think that has been the biggest shift. The business has become far more competitive than what it was earlier. But uh, there are always going to be pluses and minuses. The other is the overall technology uh, has changed dramatically and likely to change dramatically. So a lot of uh, a lot of uh, opportunities arising out of new technologies, whether it's digital technologies or whatever other newer technologies which are emerging, which can be leveraged. Uh, the other thing is, you know, the entry barriers which were there earlier, especially in consumer products, uh, have got uh, eliminated or reduced much more because of the fact that, you know, the digital channels have opened up. So you can market a product through digital advertising, which will not require the same level of budgets. You will you can market the product through e-commerce. Uh, you don't need to distribute it in uh, in so many shops. So these are fundamental changes which have happened in the environment, which uh, which uh, is for which due to which it's easier to establish a consumer product business compared to what it was uh, maybe about 10 years back, because then you required a national advertising budget. You required a whole all India distribution network, which required huge resources. And you can do now without all that through the digital marketing and e-commerce uh, route. Can you tell us about your uh, health initiative and the reasons so, why you started? Yes. So I think there are two, two, two health initiatives I've undertaken. One is as a business, another is as a as a giving uh, back to the society. Uh, the giving back society is under the Mariwala Health Initiative, mm -hmm. uh, and it's an uh, initiative to help. Um, and this was began about seven or eight years back. My daughter is looking after this. So we help, uh, we fund uh, uh, worthy organizations who are doing work in the area of mental health. We do research in the mental health. We come out with a lot of papers. Uh, we also try and play an influence in terms of the government and the role. So a lot of work we're running a, a call center through a, our partner where we fund them. So this is done by TIS and the call center is I call. So whether it's you, you can make a call to them or you can send an email to them or through a chat box, you can ask any question we will not even know it's completely confidential nobody will know who it called up and i think it's very important to provide such avenues to people and a lot of our health and mental health initiatives are geared towards uh, marginalized communities for communities in rural areas which uh, for which there is higher need there's huge cost the country is paying because of mental health uh, issues and we have not even costed that but it goes into billions and billions of rupees and if you are able to, and these are like, it's like going to a doctor. And if you're not well, you go to a doctor. But if you are mentally ill, people are still feeling reluctant to go to a mental health doctor. So how do you overcome all this? Uh, how do you ensure that there are mechanisms where there'll be barefoot, barefoot counselors? So if you have issues which are upsetting you, you can take it up with them. Or you have channels like I call uh, call centers where uh, a lot of your anxieties, uh, especially in these pandemic days, the mental health issues have galloped substantially. So our vision is to be the, the most active and the most, I believe that we are the most active today in India in terms of what grants we are giving. And uh, we are already giving grants to about 15, 20 organizations and they have to be, over the next uh, two, three years, we want to scale it to about 50 or or organization then we spend i spend a lot of resources from my personal side uh, um, in helping these organizations uh, uh, and support them not only financially but also in terms of if they require any other help in terms of managing uh, whatever they're doing so that's on the mental health the other is i've just started a new business in bombay uh, for physical health it's uh, realized that it's very easy to exercise in water so we've uh, uh, the name of the business is aqua centric so we have a pool where you know we uh, serious cases of uh, physiotherapy or uh, or if you have a neuro issues like a stroke uh, we have trained people 
internationally and you know we have been built treadmills we have been built cycles within the water and because they're able to exercise uh, in water very easily the recovery is much faster so we have four verticals we have we have sports we have uh, neuro we have uh, physio we have uh, women's health and we have uh, uh, children's health for example if some children are having some disabilities like uh, you know uh, like uh, aut uh, autism or uh, many other they are able to exercise easily and i think the recovery there is much faster so that's a new business we started though in the last 10 months we had to be shut because of the pandemic but i'm quite hopeful that once things are back to normal we will expand it all on all india basis you know. uh i'm also happy to tell you that we also have our own mental health initiative we have a, a helpline a 24/7 mental health oh very helpline. good yeah very we've good also, yeah. yeah you know recently uh, you know launched courses for mental health we've launched posh which is uh, prevention of yes. sexual yes. harassment yes 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 started, uh, you know music very therapy sort of empowerment webinars so uh, it's and i've been closely watching also the uh, your health initiative so yeah. it's been yeah. uh, you know very interesting to uh, see that um my last questions i'll actually ask you is that how did you uh, start uh, uh, you know ascend foundation what was the idea so it came from a belief that entrepreneurs add a lot of value to all the stakeholders you know and uh, i had seen many entrepreneurs having very good ideas and they were not able to grow beyond a point you know they had their own way of dealing and the biggest issue was that they were not able to deal with their partner their family on one side number two they were not able to attract talent they were not able to delegate and empowered and then also you know they they thought that they were masters of they had to manage each and everything and i said that if we can actually bring in that fundamental shift in the entrepreneur's mindset then they'll be able to grow so it's a peer to peer learning platform where they learn from each other and we have many webinars we have many learning opportunities we have mentoring also for the entrepreneurs and uh, i started with i believe that if i am able to influence entrepreneurs and helping them scale up then that will drive economic growth and that will impact all our lives uh, either as consumers or as employers or or as a part of the society you know thank you so much harji it was a thank you mrunal yeah thank you you i've learned so much from from this talk uh, professor ahuja ji whatever that i mean anything that you would like to ask conclude so i would like to thank him you know for giving us his time and uh, you know sharing his thoughts his wisdom with all the participants the young minds who are the future of the country so i i would want to really thank uh, harsh ji for thank his thank interaction you. today and also thank you munal ji for making it so very lively right each of those questions were ticklers you know i mean giving us new <laughs> insights Yeah. So yes, yes. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Words are not enough to convey our gratitude to you both. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay. So uh, I can log off. Yeah. I'm logging off. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. We were extremely humbled to have you here. Thank you, thank you. All, all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Nal, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for such an intriguing session. Thank you, Professor Ajayji. Thank you for this. No, no. Thank you, ma'am. It is you who have actually, you know, managed this inaugural <laughs> session for us, and wonderful. You know, I mean, we would want to see more of you at the OIT. In addition to Sir coming here. <laughs> it was my pleasure, and yes, we can, you know, plan many more such, you know, interesting yeah. webinars yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. The objective is objective is to give back to society, and you are doing the same thing. Yeah. Thank you. You are so passionate much. about it. Yes. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I now call upon Dr. Abhishek More, IIC member and Faculty of Metallurgy and Material Science Department, to propose a vote of thanks. Following which, we have some instructions for startups and student interns. Thank you, Anjali. 
So uh, I take this opportunity to thank uh, our chief guest, Sri Harsh Mariwala, uh, for sharing his uh, wisdomful experience with all of us at Startup Pune Fest. Uh, thank you uh, very much, sir. Uh, I also thank uh, our <clears throat> guest of honors, uh, Mrs. Brunal Pawar, for uh, bringing Harsh Mariwala ji to this uh, event, Pune Startup Fest. I also take this opportunity to thank uh, Shri Pratap Ravji Pawar, uh, sir, for his encouraging words. I thank our director, sir, Shri, uh, Professor Sri B.B. Ahuja, sir, for his constant encouragement, support, and guidance to all of us. I thank Professor, uh, B, uh, Professor M.S. Sutawne, Deputy Director, College of Engineering, Pune. I thank Jim Khanna team, Bhau Institute for the support. And this uh, event is a culmination of hard work of students and faculties at CUAP. I thank all of them. Uh, I thank uh, all the participants and startups at, uh, taking uh, for their active participation into this particular program and making it a success. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mori, sir. I now kindly request Director, sir, to declare that Pune Startup Fest 2021 is inaugurated. I declare the Pune Startup Fest 2021 to be open and inaugurated. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you to all. The Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, Anjali and team. Thank you, Karnik, ma'am. Thank you, Vijay, sir, for all your support and help. It was a wonderful session today. Thank you so much, sir. The expo is live now. We request one and all to visit the expo. Thank you for being such a great audience. Startups can now begin their interactions at the booths and students can start browsing through the startups for internships. We have, we have an exciting session in the evening by Ms. Sonakshi Nathani on five realistic tips to build a successful startup. Thank you everyone. Have a great day ahead. All the best.